Hello, welcome back to On The Shelf. So today we are doing the Q&A and giveaway video. Firstly, I just wanna say thanks for the huge response to the initial video for the giveaway. There were tons of comments, there was loads of new subscribers, which was great and yeah, just, a lot of interesting things to pick apart here so I'm not gonna spend too much time introducing this video because I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be a bit of a long one so yeah what I'm gonna to aim to do is answer as many questions as I can from the comments that were left obviously I can't answer them all and also I might go back into the video and try and reply to as many comments as possible once this is up just to kind of fill in the gaps from where I left off in this video so yeah stick it out to the end where I will be doing the actual giveaway at the end there'll be three winners I've made a huge list of everyone's names who've left comments on the previous video and I'm going to do a bit of a random name generator type thing to keep it fair and yeah pick three winners so yeah look forward to that and without further ado let's get straight to the Q&A so I think I'm gonna just kind of go through the questions in some sort of like chronological order. I feel like that's the most logical, but as I say, I'm not gonna answer every question. So some of them I might skip over. So I apologize for that in advance. Firstly as well, I just wanna say that I'm probably gonna butcher everyone's names in this video. So apologies and just bear with me. First question we have is from Musa Masombali and they ask, what manga do you think has the best artwork in your opinion? I think that's really tough because art is really subjective, but I'm just going to go ahead and say Shuzo Oshimi. He's my favourite um, manga artist, I would say. A lot of people would probably argue Takehiko Inoue, and I wouldn't disagree with that, and also Kintaro Miura, both fantastic artists, but I just really love Oshimi's art style, and I think he's really good at kind of creating different shifts in tone with his art, so... Yeah, personal favourite of mine. Neox on Fire says, what got you started on collecting manga? And the short version of that is anime, but I actually have a video that I'm making currently, which is like how I got into manga collecting and it's a fun little project that I'm working on. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled for that if you want more information about how I got started. Spoonflaps12, already the best username on here so far, <laughs> asks, omnibuses or singles? Um, short answer, singles probably. I just like having all the covers. But yeah, if it's something that's particularly rare or hard to get hold of, then I might lean towards omnibuses if that's an easier option for me to actually pick up and read the series. Crescent Snow says, what manga would you consider to be a masterpiece that every manga fan would love? And I feel like that's like a bit of a contrasting question because what I would consider to be a manga masterpiece, someone else might not. So I can't really comment on what everyone would love um, because everyone's tastes are different but if you want to know what my favorite manga are then i'll leave a link to my top 10 manga list and you can go and check that out if you want to arch am is um an, another great youtuber go and check his channel out he says um what are your channel goals as well as your collection goals and i don't have a channel goal i never really have it was more to just have fun and be able to talk about manga with people who love the hobby as much as me because a lot of my friends don't really know about manga so I don't have any platform to kind of vent my opinions on certain things so it's quite nice to have that platform um, so no there's not particularly any channel goals I think I'm too lazy to really set any specific goals but it'd be nice for the channel to grow and it would be nice to meet more people so um yeah that that's the main channel goal i suppose in terms of my collection goals i suppose it's just to make sure that my collection really represents who i am all the things that i love and enjoy and if there's anything on this you know bookcase that doesn't really fit that bill then i'll have no qualms with getting rid of that so yeah it's just to make sure that it's a a concise consistent sort of representation of my tastes and what I enjoy because you don't have time for things that you don't really enjoy. Now, this is a question that I get a lot on lots of different kind of videos and it's not something that is particularly I thought was particularly useful because I'm from the UK so people from other countries might find my answer unhelpful but Joshua Knowles wants to know where I buy most of my manga from 
And the answer to that is either Forbidden Planet, I have a local comic book store called Page 45, which is a bit more expensive, but they tend to have everything that I can't find anywhere else. And then like Amazon, Blackwell's, Wordery or Book Depository. I use all of those and I just kind of have a look to see where is the cheapest manga and eBay. I buy a lot on eBay as well. Next, Manga Osaman says, what two mangakas would you love to see collab and make manga? In real life examples, Mamoru Oshii and Sasoshi Kone made Seraphim or Burasan and Miura made Japan, which I recently picked up. So I'm looking forward to reading that on a, a bit of a side note, but uh, mangakas to collab. I don't know, maybe just like in a ways art style with a Junji Ito horror. I think that would be cool, just throwing that out there. What are some of your favorite manga spines? Hmm. I like the Gantz spines, that's not me just flexing in any way. I think they, they look really clean. And then probably, probably Blade of the Immortal, just because that's the main reason that I haven't gone out and bought the deluxe versions. I really love those color spines, but there's a lot of cool spines like Ajin and Dora Hidoro, anything really colorful, probably I'm, I'm there for that. <laughs> Lucas Warrior Team Mining says, what's a manga you wish more people knew about? Um, that's a bit difficult. I guess a lot of Matsumoto manga because I think until recently, not many people have really been talking about Matsumoto manga, myself included. So I think in a way he's very celebrated, but he's also criminally underrated. So go and read Ping Pong or Sunny because both fantastic series and uh, maybe Ping Pong because it's a bit cheaper to pick up. Jordan says, one of my favorite ways to read manga is in a nice chair right when the sun is coming up and I can enjoy a cup of coffee. What's your favorite way to get comfy and read? I mean, damn, that sounds pretty cool to me. Um, I read a lot more in the evening than I do in the day. I, th I find that it's my way to escape when I've come home from work. So my ideal way to read manga is probably the same. I have my comfy armchair downstairs. The TV can't be on. I don't really like any sound whatsoever. I just want it to be peace, quiet. Maybe when my partner goes to sleep, it's just the, the most peaceful time in the house where I can really dive into some manga, so probably then. Kite562, what's one of the most memorable mangas that you've read and its story stuck with you to this day, story-wise? Um, Goodnight Pumpun, I think, is the most impactful manga that I've read. I've heard a few people say that it, it's probably more so if you read it when you were younger, but I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there's some really hard-hitting stuff in that, and that manga I still think about all the time so yeah good night pun pun manga chills what's your current favorite comedy manga i don't like comedy manga i don't know why it's just nothing particularly makes me laugh in manga i don't know if it's just the medium just has haven't found the series that i really find hilarious but i do like golden kamui and i think that or kamui golden kamui I like Golden Kamui, I think that's funny, and I think some of the humour in early Dragon Ball, although it's a bit pervy, was quite funny, so. Stelios BC, have you read Sneeze? Do you like anthologies or short stories in general? So he's referring to Sneeze by Naoki Urasawa, and I've picked it up, but I haven't read it yet. Um, but I have I do like anthologies and short stories. I have a few kind of short story collections, and I think obviously Junji Ito is the main kind of um, one within manga at the minute that does a lot of anthologies and short stories, if not almost exclusively. So yeah, I do like short stories i think they they give the art, artist and the creators a way to kind of experiment a little bit more without committing to something so yeah big fan of one shots and things like that throning spark 03 says what's your favorite short series 15 or less volumes easy fire punch read fire punch <laughs> That is all. Okay, so Sean asks, what's my most anticipated manga release for 2021? I made a whole video about this, so if you wanna go and check that out, then please do. But the short answer is Femme Fatale by Shizu Hashimi. It's a really cool art book, which is coming out very soon. So I've got that on pre-order. Pretty sure it might be out in certain regions now as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. 
and also Die Dark by Q Hayashida. I think that's going to be really, really good. Maiden Moda asks, what are your thoughts on the idea of separating the artist from the art, specifically when it comes to mangaka? So I think as I understand this question, it's relating to certain manga artists and creators that I suppose that commit offences or have commit offences because I might make a whole video about this in the future but there are certain um, members of the manga community that have done you know committed criminal acts and some people can argue that they can still enjoy what they create um, without kind of supporting their criminal activity and if that's the case then I, I perhaps I don't agree with that sentiment I don't really want to be financially supporting anyone who commits a crime so I, I apologize if that's not what your question meant but that's how I kind of read that so yeah I'm, I might make a video on that in the future because I have a lot to say about that but for now I probably no I probably don't think you can just separate the artist from the art when they do criminal things so so next Javier D Diaz or Diaz asks what's your guilty pleasure manga that you don't that you know isn't good but you enjoy it so i don't actually have any manga that i that i think aren't good like there aren't any that i collect or keep that i don't enjoy but there are certainly guilty pleasure manga that i own so maybe tenjo tenge is one it's a creator of air gear and it's really stupid action series that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and there's a lot of etchy in there as well so that, that's one of them and then obviously prison school that's something i talk about quite a bit i think on social media and things like that i, I really enjoy prison school for what it is i think it's very self-aware and i think it's hilarious so a bit of a guilty pleasure i mean my fiance gave me some pretty weird looks when i came home with that one um, but at the same time, read what you enjoy and who gives a shit, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Next, Laura Martin says, what is one manga that you really couldn't buy at the moment but couldn't resist the temptation and bought it anyway? Was it worth it? Now, I don't often buy manga if I'm not financially able to, kids, so don't do that. It's not wise, <laughs> but there's been times where I've seen, I've seen things that are rare or hard to come by that I hadn't planned on on picking up and I think depending on what it is it has to mean something to you I suppose but you know I found a copy of Go Go Monster which was like gold dust and it was really cheap so I wasn't gonna pass that up you know things like that I think you just gotta weigh it up yourself and yes that was worth it so Night Lamb says who would win in a fight uh, Guts from Berserk or Masashi Miyamoto from Vagabond uh, who would win in a sword fight? I was going to say, a straight up fight, it would be Guts because he, he has the power to kind of overpower Masashi. But in terms of a sword fight, I think Masashi is sort of an expert. He, he's a master of his craft. So I guess he would technically outmatch Guts, but don't hate me for that one. Don't, don't fight me. <laughs> Laura A says, how can you tell when a manga is out of stock or out of print? I watched your video about this so I know that popular manga is probably just out of stock but how can you tell otherwise and that is the the worst thing about manga collecting Laura I think I it's terrible you, you don't know like you honestly don't know I think if something sells well then they're probably gonna give it a reprint if it's something by Dark Horse then even if it sells well if it isn't berserk it isn't getting a reprint but most of the time it's just bad luck I, there's a lot of things that i wished in the past that i'd picked up when i wanted to pick it up and i didn't and then it, it became out of print but never give up hope you know you can find manga pre-owned even if it is out of print and sometimes not for as expensive as you'd think and a lot of the time you know if it does well and if you tell your publishers that you're interested in it then sometimes they do give things a reprint or they give it a, a deluxe kind of omnibus treatment and things like that so it's never the end of the road so not to worry but yes i think just collect things a series at a time or a few series at a time and if you really enjoy it pick it up when you can afford it and don't worry too much about it because things like that happen and 
unfortunately that's just manga collecting honestly i don't think we're going to get through all of these questions there's no way but <laughs> i might save them and like do them again in another one if you enjoyed this i do a couple of episodes shanty dan 86 cool guy go and follow him on instagram he's got really good artwork he says my question is would you be open to doing a comic book for manga readers video i used to read more comics and manga but these days i'm 90 percent manga although i'd still highly recommend anything by jason aaron brian k vaughan and jeff Lamaya for manga fans who want to try comics. I'm really not that much of an expert in comic books. Um, I think there's a, a really cool creator on YouTube called Darth Pen Manga and Comics who definitely reads more comic books than me. I'm just a big Walking Dead fan and I really like Watchmen and things like that. So maybe, but it's really open. It's really down to whether or not I read more comic books in the future. So. For sure, I'm going to be checking out some of those creators that you've recommended, and who knows, maybe that will happen one day. Rocker LS says, "What's a rare manga series slash volume that you'd love to get your hands on one day?" I've been really lucky thus far in in that I've found quite a lot of the things that I'm I've been really trying to get a hold of. I've found most of them now, so. Um, there's a, there's a couple of series that I still really want to get my hands on and I guess the main one at the minute is I Am A Hero. I have got the first five volumes and I ordered the sixth one from someone on eBay in France. <laughs> That's like how desperate it's getting at the minute. So um, yeah, there's a few more volumes of those left that I want to collect. And also another one that I don't know if it is rare is probably Dr. Slump. I'm a big Toriyama fan, so I really want to check out his like early series. So there's a few of his one shots as well that are quite hard to get hold of that maybe one day I will find. Megan DeBaby says, since manga is steadily increasing in its sales outside of Japan, what do you see in the future for manga globally? Also, what old classic manga in any genre would you recommend? I think that manga is way bigger now than it was when i started collecting and same with anime and even more so than when i was a kid and they were still around but it it was like something you talked about in hushed tones on the playground you didn't want anyone to know so i think it's just the, the internet has played a huge role in letting people know that they're more accepted and, and their hobbies are shared with more people but for sure, I think that the the future for manga globally is just gonna it's gonna get it's gonna increase. It's gonna get bigger and bigger. It's gonna be as big as like maybe not quite as big as video games, but you know like that exponential increase. I think for sure. And then, what old classic manga would you recommend? The minute I've been reading um, Message to Adolf or Adolf, I suppose if you're American, <laughs> um, by Osamu Tezuka which is a really really hard hitting manga and I I definitely want to collect more from him so I think it, it's a little bit it's difficult to recommend for everyone I always struggle but I think he is claimed to be the godfather of manga so maybe go and check out a few of his and read the synopsis and see if any of those uh, pique your interest or maybe just like Urasawa in general because I think that all of his works are really really well done as well. BB Reads, has a manga ever made you cry? If so, which one was it? No, I've not cried to a manga yet. I don't know if that makes me like a heartless, soulless monster, but I've cried to anime before. I cried to Anno Hanna. I think that that broke me and I watched that when I was having a bit of a tough time at university so that one is really hard hitting and same with Your Lie in April. They're both some of my favourite anime. I'm just a bit of a glutton for punishment with those series and I would highly recommend both so go and check those out if you haven't already. Stubsy C says what series showed great promise but gradually got worse and let you down. Also would you recommend Golden Kamui? Yes, I would recommend Golden Kamui. It's really funny and there's a lot of different genres mixed together in there. So that's really good. Really great recommendation all round for everyone, I would say, who likes seinen manga. A series that got worse and let me down. This might be really controversial, but probably Berserk. I think that Berserk 
actually hits its peak in the Golden Age arc. And personally, I think after that, it just did get worse. Like, not it's not bad by any means, but it, it, I kept expecting the highs and the, the real pinnacle that it sort of hit during the Golden Age arc to resurface, and that never really happened yet. So it might just be because it's coming out so slowly, but yeah, for sure, I think Berserk probably... Um, isn't as good after volume 20 something whatever it is I think what we're gonna do just so this video isn't horrifically long is I'm gonna do f five more questions and then we're gonna do the giveaway and then what I'm going to do is because uh, I've been doing this in chronological order I'm probably gonna record my responses to the rest of the questions and release it as like a follow-up video later so if you want to actually come back and find out what i think and and learn a little bit more about me from all these questions then please do come back and watch that video later so the okay, first of the final five questions we have pranil gardi or gahardi sorry if i butchered your names again uh, I am new to the manga community and I would like to have something in my collection. My question to you is that you do you listen to any specific songs while reading manga? Suggest me some too. Um, as I said before, I don't often listen to music while I read. I tend to really enjoy that peace and quiet while I read. But there's a couple of times that I've actually bothered to put on music just because I've been alone in the house and it's a little bit creepy if it's just dead silent um, and I often put on um, Studio Ghibli music a lot of stuff like that um, hip-hop music I really enjoy or there's like a lo-fi beats playlist which I think everyone listens to and it's like this girl in a video with her cat and she's like studying and those sort of tunes that just sort of Amble on. This sort of the style of music that I tend to put in the background of my videos. I really enjoy. I think they're really relaxing. So anything that just chills you out, anything that's just not going to distract you from reading manga, I think is a good shout. Question two of the final five comes from Corbin. How do you like to organise your collection? I struggle with this a lot. I, I've or reorganized my collection many times. I used to do it alphabetically and then at one point I did it by color and both of those were just really time consuming and awkward. So now I just do it by aesthetic. I just do it genu genuinely by eye. I tend to like to group authors and mangaka like together. So I'll have all of my Junji Ito together, all my Urasawa, all my Asano, um, things like that I like to keep together. And then I try and either do by genre so at one point i had a whole horror shelf which i really enjoyed but now it doesn't really fit with what i'm going for or i'll organize by like height so uh, you probably notice like a lot of my books on the bookcase are very similar in size like i don't like i mean this annoys me because this is part of the junji ito so i don't i don't want to take that away but I'd like to have everything a similar kind of height on the shelf. <laughs> like, uh, I'm just weird. I, I do it my own way and I get very bored with how it looks sometimes and I'll change it up. So just find what you like the look of and look at other people's collections as well and see what they've put together and what you think would work for you. Question three is uh, what manga, uh, sorry, this comes from Kim Zups and that is what manga which hasn't been made into an anime yet, nor has an upcoming anime announced, would you like to see get adapted? Dead Dead Demons, I think, should get an anime. I think it's Asano's most kind of um, approachable series. It's, I mean, it's still really hard hitting and pretty brutal, but I think it would make a fantastic anime. Or like Goodnight Pum Pum, but at the same time, I think the art style is a bit weird for it to be made into an anime so maybe one of those or i would like to see a vagabond anime i just like more samurai stuff so that would be really cool as well question four comes from zt have you gone through a burnout period or just lost interest if so how do you get out of it did you do anything specific to avoid it i get loads of burnout all the time i get burnout with youtube i get burnout with manga i get burnout with most things that i do um and the best thing to do is just take a step away from it and don't try and force it like the whole reason that i tend to go through 
periods of not creating YouTube videos is just because I get burnout. I, I, I don't feel motivated enough or I don't know what it is. It's just some chemical imbalance maybe that makes me really demotivated and I don't want to put out a video that's half-baked. I don't ever want to make something for the sake of making it and kind of have that on the internet forever. I think it would be really obvious and I think it would be letting you guys down and letting myself down as well. So I would say if you've got burnout, just don't overthink it. Don't worry about it. Do whatever it is at the time you feel like you're in the mood to do or that you enjoy. If you're bored of reading, watch some films or play some games, do whatever. Um, and that's fine because I'm always going to come back to manga and if you really love manga then you will as well so uh, don't yeah don't worry about it it happens to everyone and the final question I think from those five maybe we'll do one bonus one comes from instant is what is your favorite ongoing seinen at the minute it's um, blood on the tracks by Shuzo Ashimi fantastic psychological series really really love that but also i've been picking up gigant by hiroya oku and that's a bit of a, a kind of guilty pleasure manga that i really enjoy as well and look forward to the volumes of those when they get released so probably those two and then yeah let's just do one more last one comes from blake hops what manga series do you consider to be a diamond in the rough or a series that you started to read but didn't really grow attached to until the next volume. I think a diamond in the rough for me is the girl on the other side. I didn't think I would enjoy it quite as much as I do. I, I really, really love that series. I feel like I talk about it all the time and beat everyone to death about it. It's so like dark and mysterious and there's always something new being added to it and it's got a really creepy vibe to the art style but at the same time it's really cute i just think it's super super underrated and i want more people to read it so please please go and read the girl from the other side okay so that about wraps it up for the q a section of this video i apologize if it went on a bit long but if you did enjoy it then like i said i'm probably gonna record some more answers to these questions for a later video because I really enjoy reading them I think you know and it's a shame to let them all go to waste everyone asked all these really nice questions and said really nice things so I want to get around to as many of them as possible and give you guys the answers on video I think that's the least I could do for 2,000 subscribers so yeah I just want to say thanks again that is the point of this video thanks for subscribing it means so much and like I said I'm going to pick three winners and the prizes again just to reiterate is a choice between blood on the tracks volume one by shuzo Ashimi, dead dead demons volume one by inio asano or doro hedoro volume one by q hayashida so i've written everyone's names out on a notepad document and then i've put those names into a random name picker so I'm not going to be able to actually show this on video annoyingly because I've got my audio recording through what I would usually record my screen with so you're going to just have to take my word for it I'm going to show you a like a screen recording now of the wheel with everyone's names on it just as proof that I put everyone's names into this name picker but I'm just going to click to spin the wheel there's going to be three winners and you can pick each of you I will contact on the original YouTube video. I will go on and I will get in touch with all of you, get your details and things like that. And I'm going to ship whichever one of those three manga you guys want to your house. So first up, the first lucky winner. Is Josh Esquil Valencia. So just going to make a note of that so I don't forget that you've won. So I will be getting in touch with you, Josh, very soon so you can pick one of those three manga. So congrats to you. And then the second, the second winner is Amine or Amine. <laughs> XD. So you've won a volume of either Dead Dead Demons, 
Blood on the Tracks or Doro Hedoro. So said all these guys I will be in touch with very very soon. And then the last winner, so good luck to everyone, is Master 56 IDK. So congrats to all those guys. And just thanks everyone for all your support, all the questions, you know, I said I am going to make another video and I'm going to get around to answering as many of them as possible because I don't want them to go to waste. And yeah, just as I said before, thank you for 2000 subscribers. It means so, so much. And please look forward to more content on the channel very soon. As I said before, I do have issues where I don't always create very regularly just be patient with me and i promise some good content coming very very soon so thanks again thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video hit like and i hope to see you in the next one peace